Hi everyone, in this lecture I will be explaining you how red blood cells are destroyed after their lifespan of 120 days is over and how bilirubin is formed from the hemoglobin and how this toxic bilirubin is detoxified and how this bilirubin once it is detoxified eliminated from the body or excreted from the body. We will discuss under these headings RBC destruction, formation of bilirubin, bilirubin conjugation or detoxification and finally excretion of bilirubin metabolites. If this excess of bilirubin that is formed if it is not excreted that accumulates in the blood and resulting in jaundice. Jaundice is the yellowish discoloration of the tissues that is mainly because of increased bilirubin content in the blood and in the tissues. Mainly the first site of jaundice is appearance in the sclera that is the outer covering of the eyeball. The connective tissue sclera will become yellowish which is supposed to be white in color it turns yellow when bilirubin levels are increased. So now we will start with the first step that is RBC destruction for formation of bilirubin. The red blood cells remain in circulation for 120 days before they are eliminated from the circulation. So during these 120 days the red blood cells is of biconcave shape and the cell membrane is very deformable. It is flexible. The cell membrane is flexible. So when this red blood cell is passing through the capillaries, the smaller capillaries, the blood cell used to deform and it squeezed through the capillary and it is easily passed through the capillaries. But with aging what happens? This biconcavity of the red cell membrane is losing because of the loss of the cytoskeleton. This is the cytoskeleton which is attached to the membrane and keeping the membrane biconcave. So with the loss of this cytoskeleton proteins what happens? This biconcavity shape is lost. It becomes slightly ovoid or it can become elliptical or it can become spherical. So loss of this biconcave shape happens with aging also and also the membrane which is very flexible becomes very fragile and very rigid. So now when this cell which is having a rigid membrane when it is trying to pass through the capillaries the capillaries are very small when the membrane the cell passing through the capillaries there will be more of friction friction between the wall of the capillary and the membrane so that will result in rupture of this membrane hemolysis can happen when the rbcs which are very fragile old and they are trying to pass through the capillaries also this senile rbc when it is passing through the capillaries it can get trapped here so because of its less deformity it is not squeezing through the capillaries it gets trapped here so the rbcs can get trapped at these capillaries and these rbcs are recognized by the macrophage sitting just close to the capillary and sending its process inside the capillary this macrophage can recognize the rbcs there's a macrophage this can recognize this rbc and this rbcs can be phagocytosed by the macrophage. Destruction of RBCs usually happen within the spleen. So you can consider this is a spleen and within the spleen all this is happening. So this is a splenic artery entering the spleen and this is dividing into multiple branches. So here this is one of the branch through which the RBC is circulating and when this RBC reaches the splenic sinusoids there the RBCs are getting trapped and the macrophages which are close to the venous sinusoids. So these are capillaries of the spleen. We call them as sinusoids or sinuses. So these sinuses are thin walled having a single layer of epithelium and they are fenestrated. There are pores and through these pores the macrophage can pop into the sinus lumen and it can recognize the trapped old RBC and cause phagocytosis. Now let us explain how the macrophage is causing the phagocytosis of the RBCs. This is the cross section of the venous sinuses within the spleen, the capillary of the spleen cross section and within this capillary is the old red blood cell and this is the RBC and I will draw a macrophage 
and its process inside the venous sinus. This is the macrophage. So, this macrophage process which is inside the capillary can recognize this RBC and cause phagocytosis of this RBC like it can go around this RBC picking up picking the RBC. So, this macrophage cell membrane process around the red blood cell. So, this is the red blood cell the nucleus of the macrophage. So, the membrane is moving around the red blood cell and it is engulfing the RBC. So, this cell membrane fuses now and the red blood cell within the membrane. So, now this fusion of this membrane is broken down so that the RBC is internalized, red blood cell is now within the macrophage. So, now what is there within the macrophage? There are lysosomes and lysosomes are filled with lysosomal enzymes. So, now the next step is the fusion between the these two, this and this gets fused. The fusion of the membrane covering the RBC with that of the lysosomal membrane. So, RBC inside here, this is the RBC and there are lot of enzymes here. So, this is the lysosome and here this is the red blood cell within the vacuole. So, now what happens? These enzymes will enter into the vacuole, they act upon the red blood cells, they act upon the red blood cells. So, what happens? The red blood cell is broken down to its fragments. So, RBC is broken down to its cell membrane fragments, the intracellular proteins and the heme, this is the heme with iron inside, heme with iron inside and the polypeptide chains globin chains, globin chains. So, all these are getting fragmented within the macrophage. So, what is happening? The red blood cell is broken down to hemoglobin release and the cell membrane proteins are broken down to amino acids, the membrane lipids are broken down to fatty acids and the RBC enzymes and proteins are broken down to amino acids and this hemoglobin, this hemoglobin is split to heme and globin. The hemoglobin present in the RBC is split to heme and globin. This globin is again a polypeptide chain, the alpha 2, beta 2 polypeptides of hemoglobin, these four polypeptides are broken down to amino acids. This heme which is formed by breakdown of hemoglobin is a tetrapyral ring. This is the four porphyrin rings with iron in the center. This will be released into the cytoplasm. So, now this heme comes out of the phagocytic vesicle or vacuole into the cytoplasm. Heme is picked up by the endoplasmic reticulum. Endoplasmic reticulum. So, within the endoplasmic reticulum, this heme is converted to bilivaldin. By the microsomal enzyme heme oxygenase. So, heme is broken down to bilivaldin. So, heme which is having four pyrrole rings and iron in the center Fe2 plus in the center and these rings are connected by methane bridges. So, this methane bridge at alpha methane bridge is cleaved. 
by heme oxygenase. So the action of heme oxygenase enzyme is to cleave this methane bridge. One bridge is cut open. So what happens to the ring? The ring is split now. In the bilirubin, the ring is split into four porphyrins. They are elongated like this. So there is no more ring appearance, and iron, which is in the Fe2 plus, is released. So heme is made up of iron and protoporphyrin ring. With the action of heme oxygenase enzyme, there is breakdown of this alpha bridge in the porphyrin, resulting in conversion of ring into a open chain, bilirubin, and releasing iron. Now, by the action of one more enzyme in the cytoplasm, this bilirubin is converted to bilirubin. So, bilirubin pigment is formed by reduction of bilirubin by bilirubin reductase enzyme. So, bilirubin is produced by reduction of bilirubin. This bilirubin is green colored pigment and bilirubin is yellow colored pigment. So, both are bile pigments. In summary, the RBCs after 120 days, they are trapped within the splenic capillaries and the macrophages will cause phagocytosis of this RBCs and the RBC is broken down to release hemoglobin. The hemoglobin is split into heme and globin and heme will be converted to bilirubin and from bilirubin, bilirubin is formed by reduction of bilirubin. This bilirubin that is formed by the breakdown of RBCs is highly toxic and water insoluble. This toxic material has to be eliminated from the body. This bilirubin, we call it as unconjugated bilirubin. This unconjugated bilirubin, which is very toxic, has to be handled by the liver cells to make it non-toxic, water soluble and that has to be excreted from our body. In the next part, we will continue with what is the role of liver and how this liver cells will detoxify or conjugate this bilirubin and eliminate the bilirubin from the body.